So I'll go over again a problem like this, but guys, again, you can see these take quite a bit of time. All right, so I'm not gonna be able to go over so many of these, so please make sure you write these down. If you have any questions, please stop me. Um, so go this. So the main important thing, right, we need to write this into our form for ellipses. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, going to group the x's, and I'm gonna group the y's. And then I'm just going to put the 2 on the other side, because remember, it has to equal uh, 1, right, for the ellipse, as we have it set equal to 1. So the next thing, I need to complete the square for both of these. So I'm just going to put parentheses around both of these. So to complete the square, I need to make sure I factor out my a in each one of these quadratics. I need to factor out that a. So in this case, I'll factor out a 6. So I'm left with x squared plus 3x. In this case, I'll factor out a 2, y squared minus 5y equals negative 2. Now the next thing I need to do is take the middle term, which is my b, and divide it by 2, and then square it. So in this case, I'll, this case I'll take 3, divide it by 2, and square it, which equals 9 fourths. This, take, this case I'll take negative 5, divide it by 2, and square it, which equals 25 over 4. Now I make sure I add these to the left. I make sure I add them within the parentheses, but also <clears throat> over to the right side. But remember, since I've factored out a number, when I add 9 fourths inside this parenthesis, that 9 fourths is being multiplied by 6. So when I add it to the right side, I also have to multiply it by 6. Very, very important point, Jessica, that a lot of students forget. 6 times x squared plus 3x plus 9 over 4 plus 2 times y squared minus 5y plus 25 over 4 equals negative 2. Then I have to add 9 fourths times 6 plus 25 over 4 times 2. Does everybody feel OK with what I, how I got that? OK. Now, when completing the square, it's pretty easy when you have an easy perfect square trinomial, right? If I had like x squared plus 6x plus 9, that's x plus 3. With the fractions, it sometimes it becomes a little difficult. But if you guys can just think of this, it's always x plus or minus just your b divided by 2 squared. So all I'm going to do is just take b divided by 2. Since my middle term is positive, I can rewrite this as 6 times x plus 3 over 2 squared. And that's the binomial squared for this perfect square trinomial. OK? Because check it out. 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 is 3. 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 is 9 over 4. Plus 2 times, this would be, um, since that's negative, it's going to be y minus 5 halves squared. Equals. All right. Um, So let's simplify this. That becomes a 2. Uh, we can divide these by 2. So therefore, um, that'd be 3. What? Do what? I said 9 over 4 times 6 over 1. I just reduced the 6 over 4. 6 over 4 is the same thing as 3 halves, right? So I made that a 2, and I made that a 3. OK? And the 2 fourths is the same thing as 1 half, right? Yeah, so I just simplified, just made that a 2, and made that a 1. OK? Um, so now I have negative 2 plus 27 halves plus 25 halves. Three times nine is twenty-seven no, no, no. over two. Yeah, it's still kind of ugly over there, but I'm kind of running out of space. So now to combine all these, I can make this a negative two, right? Can I make that a? I mean, I make this over two. So therefore, I can rewrite this as negative four over two. Would that work? Yeah, because now they all have a denominator of two. So now when I rewrite this, well, what's twenty-seven plus twenty-five? That's going to be 52, and then minus 4 is going to be 48 over 2. So
So can I erase that now to 48? Does everybody have this written down? So I can erase this to 48, negative 48 over 2? Yeah, it's positive. Thank you. I was going to say that's going to turn us to a hyperbola. OK, so now we need to get this over to 1, though, right? Yes? So I need to divide by 48 over 2 over everything. Whoa. Now, yes? Oh, yeah, why don't we just do that, right? Haley, good thinking, Haley. So, yes, this becomes 24. Haley's trying to be smart out. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you very much. So, 24, I wanted to have you practice with fractions. So, yeah, you just divided in with 24, and now we simplify again. So 6 over 24 is 1 fourth. So I have x plus 3 halves squared. That goes over to 4. Plus, that goes to 1 twelfth, right? y minus 5 halves squared over 12 equals, sorry, I forgot to divide that side, equals 1. OK, so that just took me five minutes just to go and do that. But I was talking my way through it. Hopefully, you guys can do it in a little bit quicker fashion. Um, but now they're still asking us what? To find the vertex, focus. It takes a lot of practice. It's just completing the square to go through. That's, you definitely need to practice, though. Um, they asked us to find all the important points, right? OK. So ladies and gentlemen, the nice thing, though, about it being in this format. OK, could somebody let her in, please? Um, so. <clears throat> Here is my standard form. Now I can go and put this. I can say the vertex is going to be negative 3 halves, positive 5 halves, right? Um, the next thing is we can go and determine, well, now we need to determine, is this a horizontal ellipse, which is our ellipse that's stretched horizontally, or an or a ellipse that's stretched vertically? Well, since the larger of my square terms is under y, I know this is going to be um, vertical. So therefore, my major axis is going to be vertical. That means my foci and my vertices are all going to lie on the major axis. So if you think about it, this, we don't need to get it correct. Let's just pretend here it is, or it's like over here. It's going to look something like this, right? I'm going to have this major axis. Therefore, when I determine what my a is, I'm going to add and subtract that to the x or the y coordinate, Jessica, of my focus. What's going to move up and down? Here's my vertex. I already got that. If I know what the value of a is, am I going to add that to the y coordinate or the x coordinate of my, ver of my center to find out there? The y coordinate. So what is my a? Well, a squared equals 12. So therefore, a equals the square root of 12, right? which we can reduce to a equals 2 square root of 3. So now, to find my vertices, I can just say negative 3 over 2, comma, 5 halves, plus or minus 2 square root of 3. Because you're adding and subtracting them to the y coordinate, because it's a major axis of symmetry that's vertical. So you've got to add them up and down. If this was a ellipse that looked like this, then you would add and subtract to the x coordinate, right? Because the major axis would be horizontal. So it all depends on what this formula is and if it's a horizontal or a vertical. Does that make sense, the distinction? The last thing we need to do is find the vertices. Uh, I'm sorry, the foci. So to determine the foci, we need to find the value of c. Unfortunately, we only know the value of a and the value of b. But remember, to find c, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So c squared equals 12 minus um, 4. So c squared equals 8. Square root of 8. Square root of 8 is 2.828471. But we'll just keep it as the square root of 8. Now, I ask the very important question, Darian, am I going to add the value of my foci to the y coordinate or to the x coordinate from the center? The y, the y coordinate, right? Because the vertices, the vertices, the foci, they all lie on the major axis of symmetry. All right? So again, my foci, the negative 3 over 2, comma, 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 8. 
And remember, guys, when I'm looking for your test, when I'm going to be grading on these, what I'm going to be looking for is I know if it's a major axis of symmetry, or I'm sorry, a major axis that's vertical, I'm going to make sure that your vertex, vertices, and foci all have the same x-coordinate. Because the only thing we're changing is the y-coordinate to find the vertices and the foci. OK? Any other questions on that? OK. But guys, it is a longer process of something.